If you have any counter question, you're most welcome, brother. Yes, actually, two points on that. Primarily, the first thing that you said is a daraba, uh, which means basically tapping. And as I understand from the Hans word dictionary, um, the, it comes from the word idrib. And now, if you look at it, the Arabic word is used in two ways. One, to strike up a poem, the word idrib, which, from which the word darwa is uh, taken out. Uh, the first is to strike up a poem, and the second, which is used 12 times in the Quran, strike is off, a what is it? Strike physical off? action of striking. Strike off? Strike up a poem, or second. Strike up a poem. Strike up a poem, the, metaphorically. Second part is the physical action of striking. It's used again in uh, Surah 812, wherein it um, about an angel strike off their heads, strike off the very tips of their fingers. The same word is used. So how can the same word be interpreted there as lightly, but here as very good off question. The second part. Very good question. Very good question. The second part is that if we come back to uh, Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, number 715, again, uh, the respectable, I truly mean that, uh, respectable woman Aisha, a great scholar, I read about her, uh, narrated, Aisha said that a lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her, that is Aisha, and showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. It was the habit at that time for women to support each other, means when they get beaten up, so you support each other. So when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as a believing woman. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. That was my second part. As for second part, I answer first and first part, I answer second. No problem. She's complaining to the Prophet that somebody has done injustice to her. It doesn't end saying the Prophet agreed with it. If someone has done injustice, if you read ahead in some other hadith, the Prophet may have done justice to her. It doesn't say that someone beat her and the Prophet agreed with it. Correct? She's just reporting that maybe there is injustice done to a woman. That's it. The moment she's complaining means she's disagreeing with it. She didn't say, Prophet, I heard a very good thing I saw that the woman was beaten up. The moment she's complaining means the wife, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be peace with her, disapproved of it. So the lesson we get from this is, no one should beat the woman such a way that she becomes green. But sir, uh, see, the exact statement she makes is that I have not seen any woman, that's Aisha herself, it's not my interpretation, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as a believing woman. So we see at the time of Muhammad uh, that women were really uh, in very, very bad shape, even though... You know, you know that said, hadith is saying, I have not seen a person, a believing person like Hazrat Bilal suffering. What was he suffering from? His master tortured him and said, don't say there's one God and I will leave you. Hazrat Bilal, may Allah be peace with him, on that death stone, he's agreed to die, he will say, I will not denounce Allah. I will keep on saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. He's taking the pain. That means if I say, Hazrat Bilal is a believer who is being tortured, that does not mean that what act that being done on Hazrat Bilal, may Allah be peace with him, is right. It is wrong. But he's a believer who's taking the pain. In this context, we have to see the context and go to the Sharah. You have to see Fatih Bari. And what was the woman? Was she, what was she? Who tortured her? Was it the master? Was she a slave woman? You have to go to the Sharah. I'm not a Muhaddis. I'm telling you what the answer can be. You have to go to the Sharah and find out. Why was she? Who hit her? Who beat her? Did the husband do? Was the husband a believer? There are 10,000 reasons. But Just sir, because... Excuse me. In Mishkat al Masa Masadi, Brother, Brother Shekhar, volume, volume 2. Brother Shekhar, yes. what I would like you to do, there are so many people waiting at all the mics. Precisely, concisely, I would like you to put your question in a few words and then close. Because you've got such a big sheaf of papers, there are many people I see waiting with small it's, slips it's, it's, it's or something. Question. So we cannot allow this whole thing to go on. This is not a debate session. It's a question Brother. and answer session. I want you to put your question in the next four sentences. Let Dr. Zakir answer so that all the many ladies standing there here also get a chance. We have exactly one hour, 12 minutes left. We I'm have occupied 20 minutes already. Brother, 
Initially, you asked two questions and answered. You said, I want a counter. What counter you gave? In the counter, you're asking one more question. I don't mind answering your 100 questions, but in this rule, one question at a time, go behind the queue, no problem. You ask two questions, give the answer. You said, I want a counter question. With the counter question, you're asking one more question. So, you know, I'm very kind. I don't mind. I would love. After finish, you can come in the cabin. And inshallah, I will answer all your questions. I want to ask you, after I answer your question, what will you do? Will you believe in the religion Hazrat Aisha believed? Yes or no? I yet have to answer your counter question. Well, it's not just this one point. There are many, many more. I'll answer inshallah all. How many are there? 10, 20, 50, 100, how many? Well, we can sit on that. How many approximately? Well, there are many more. I have not How many? 10, 20, 100, 1000, 10,000, how many do you have now in your mind? Well, I do have. How many? 10, 20, 30, how many? Yeah, probably quite a few, maybe. Quite a few is how much? Five or 10? Approximately. I don't know, maybe 100 questions. 100 questions you have? Brother, after this session is over, we sit together. Okay? Write down all the 100 questions. Inshallah. Inshallah. I will try and answer everyone. Okay? I request you. We'll spend the full night together. I don't mind. Because you are a seeker of truth. And I'm also a seeker of truth. And my job is to try and clarify the truth. Not that I'm a scholar. I will try and answer all your 100 questions. But I doubt whether you will be able to write 100 questions. I doubt. Coming to your main counter question, brother. That will be basic counter question. Counter question of yours is that Daraba has got two meanings. One is strike off the head. You ask me then, how do you come to know which is correct? Correct? Exactly. In the counter question, don't ask one more question. That means you're breaking the rule. Sir, I'm just refuting what you said. No refuting. See, you asked a counter question. Counter question was of Daraba has got meaning of striking. That is the counter question. In that counter question, you asked one more question. You can't ask one more question in a counter question. You can ask one counter question, but that was a fresh question that you asked. Now, coming to your question of Daraba, you said striking, I agree with you. How do you come to know one time it is lightly beating, one time it is striking off the head? You know, the verse in the Quran is there, in Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse number 47. Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, she says, when Archangel Gabriel says that you shall have a son. So she says, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? How shall I have a son when no man has touched me? Now, if you go to the Luga, your hands wear dictionary. All lanes, I believe you read my dictionaries. All this you can get on internet. It's not difficult. You go on the internet and type, you'll get 100 questions against Islam. You get 100, you get 1,000. Very easy. Not that a person has done research. If you had done research, you'd have come to know who was whose father and who was whose husband and mother, everything. But you go on the internet, you get this very easy. Now, the Arabic word, Masa has got two meanings. Physical touch, it means sexual touch. So when Mary Mella be pleased with her, she says, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? It is understood. It is not physical touch, it is sexual touch. Correct? Yes. Similarly, there are several verses in the Quran. Now when there are two, three meanings, even both can be correct or one can be correct. To have more details, you go to the Hadith. Hadith is the commentary of the verse of the Quran. Correct? Maybe the same word has got two meanings. In that verse, it means meaning number one. In the second verse, it meaning number two. Hadith is the commentary. So when we go to the Hadith of this Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 34, talking about Daraba, there the Prophet said, do not beat on the face. Do not leave a mark. Beat like a toothbrush. I gave the answer, but you were so much concentrating on the notes you have that you forgot my answer. If you have heard my answer, that if there are two, three meanings, all meanings cannot be right. Maybe one is right, maybe two are right, maybe all three are right. Therefore, you have to go back to the Prophet. The Quran says, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So when there are two, three meanings, you have to go to the Hadith and find out what did the Prophet mean by that word. So there when it says strikes off that, it means strikes off. Here it means strike lightly. So therefore, if you know the supplement is the commentary of the Quran, it's the Hadith. Without the authentic Hadith, you cannot understand Islam. So a prophet said, it means beat lightly, like beating with a toothbrush, don't beat on the face, don't leave a mark on the body. 
So these are the guidance given by Rasul. Therefore, it is obligatory that besides the Quran, we have to follow the authentic hadith. Hope that answers the question. And inshallah, I'll wait for you after 10 o'clock in the speaker's lounge, inshallah. Thank yes, Brother Shekhar? Thank you. And, and since you have two daughters, you said you have two daughters and you want, sorry? And one son. The son? There's no hadith saying the son will take you to Jannah here. Yeah. <laughs> if he becomes the pious son, and if he prays for you, inshallah, he will be a path to Jannah. What I want, I want to see to it that besides good deeds, you even have faith. Faith is one of the important criteria to go to Jannah. And since you have an urge to go to Jannah, to paradise, inshallah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he make me the zariah. The pathway to take you to Jannah, inshallah. Hi, my name is uh, Chloe. I'm from Canada. I'm a student here in Mumbai. And my question is uh, why women are not accepted into mosque in India? Sisters asked a very good question that why are women not accepted in the mosque in India? So India is to blame, not the Quran and Hadith. I told in my lecture, do not judge Islam by looking at what the Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. Judge Islam according to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said to the Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet said, do not prevent the female servants of Allah from going to the mosque. Another Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one in the book of Salah, just a few Hadith before that, he said that if the female servants, that means the Muslim women, servants of Allah, if they want to go to the mosque at night, do not prevent them. Now, it is the Indian culture. Now, when we allow a woman to go in the mosque, we see to it that she gets equal but separate facilities, separate entrance, separate place of ablution, wudu, separate place of prayer. We don't believe in intermingling, like when you go to the church or when you go to the temple. Why? Because in our Salah sister, when we pray, we believe in equality of human beings. We stand shoulder to shoulder, irrespective of whether the man next to me is black or white, yellow or brown, king or pauper. I stand close to him, shoulder to shoulder. Now, if a lady is there, close to me, shoulder to shoulder, the medical doctors tell me the temperature of the lady is one degree higher. If I pray standing with her, shoulder to shoulder, I will concentrate more on her than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, separate but equal facility. Separate entrance, separate place of wudu, you have to wash yourself. Wash your legs. You can't do in front of the Namaram. So in India, most of the mosques don't have. But Alhamdulillah, it has started. I know of several mosques in Bombay where they have facilities for ladies. We have several mosques in South India where I've been to there. But I do agree with you, it is very less in percentage. If you go to Saudi Arabia, almost all the mosques, more than 95% of the mosques, they have facility for women. More than 95 whether it's 99, 99.9, I don't know. More than 95% of the mosques have separate facility for ladies. You go to London, you go to USA, most of the foreign, it is India. So the problem is with the Indian Muslims. Therefore, in my talk, I say that see to it, there should be a separate facility for the women. Separate, but equal facility so that they too can pray to Almighty God in the mosque. Good evening, sir. My name is Ashish, and my question is, there is concept in Islam by paying money to the victim's family. By paying money to victim's family, from accused family, and getting released from the crime. What is the concept behind that? And is it not injustice with the victim's family? I'll better ask the question that what is the concept of dia money, means paying blood money in Islam, that if someone has murdered someone or killed someone, whatever reason, the family members of the person who's murdered can excuse, can excuse by taking the money. This concept is that if someone is driving a car or maybe by mistake while walking something happens or by accident someone dies. Here, if it is out of negligence, yet, for example, a doctor is doing surgery and it is proven out of negligence, the patient has died. Islamic law, death penalty. But there, the relatives of the person who has died, fine, we agree the niya was good. He didn't actually kill my son. I forgive him. But negligence, if it is done while trying to save a life, he goes scot-free. 
But if negligence he does something and the person dies, then death penalty because of his fault. In this case, if it's proven it is 100% negligence, then the family members may say, even if it's negligence, I forgive him. Okay. I forgive him like free. I forgive him by taking one rupee or by the one million rupees. Maybe that one million rupee may be a penalty. Okay, don't do it again. Now you have done it. I don't want to take your life. I forgive you. But one million rupee is a penalty. So this concept in Islam that the person who has died, his family members can forgive by asking a penalty. If it is a conspiracy and a murder, 100% proven, then it is death penalty. These cases are mainly when we know that the person has a chance to be forgiven. If someone goes and does a bomb blast on the street and kills 100 people, innocent people, no forgiving, death penalty direct. You understand? Now, for example, while if you're doing something, maybe a building is being constructed, fine, and there's negligence, the worker gets electrocuted. It's the fault of the builder. Now the family members say, okay, I don't mind forgiving. You know, my husband used to give me every day 2,000 rupees. Now, if I demand 500,000 rupees, even in full life, how much could he give me? 25,000 a year? Five lakh would take how many years? How many? 20 years. So now if I take that five lakh rupees, I can invest it some way and get 4,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees a month. Correct? So fine, I forgive him. And with this money, at least I can survive. The various aspects and angles. This is not the only aspect. I'm giving you examples. So in this way, what happens? At least in Indian law, finish death penalty. But oh, bichare ka bread enough to mar gaya na. Usko fayda kya hua? Does the government take care of him? The earning member has died. The wife and children are on the street. Does the government help? No. So here, at least as a compensation, now they invest the money. Every month they get five thousand rupees. So at least some part of their life is taken care of. It may not compensate completely. And sometimes the person may just forgive without taking money also. So therefore, the various situations Islam has permitted so that it's beneficial for both. And kindly have your questions on women's rights, the topic of the day, please. Uh, Shalom. I'm Danny. Uh, I'm a student. I read Bible, studying more about the biblical manners, understanding. And I do read uh, Muslim books. Uh, now, I'm not relating to all the question what Bible and Quran has. Uh, this is something related to my friend, who is my best friend. His name is, uh, uh, no, don't want to take it, sorry. Now, he is married, and due to some reason, uh, he's uh, planning to divorce his wife. And I find it out that that was a very small reason that he wants to divorce his wife. And secondly, uh, yesterday I was just reading this Mumbai Mirror at midday that 112 years old guy, uh, Muhammad from Somali, he's uh, getting married, or, sorry, get, got married to this 13 year old girl, Safiya. And I was very disturbed to answer my friend because I just asked one of my friends and he told, this is what we learn and this is what we return and this is what we follow. So I just went on to the internet as is that this is the easiest way I see because I uh, don't get a chance like a uh, Zakir brother for you to uh, question it. <laughs> so just I'll just read it for you for, if you give me a chance to read it from uh, what I found it from the internet uh, regarding this uh, justification and the relationship which Muhammad had. Is that a true or you just help me out to come out of this issue and I can go to my friend and say that this is what exactly the Quran teaches. I'll read do it you for want you, to read or do you want me to answer? I'll just read it first for you. But you aren't satisfied with the answer, no? Uh, whatever. You may say, hope I answer so the question. I'll give you the answer. No, hope so you So what say... the paper says, forget about it. Okay. If you are satisfied with the answer what you have in your hand, then that's uh, sufficient. Actually, if you're not I... satisfied, I'll give you the answer directly. Uh, just let me read it. Okay, no. okay, take care. Brother, no brother, put it in just five sentences in precise form. Otherwise, don't read it. I'll do, th I'll do that for you, sir. Uh, this is actually, let me uh, just quote it uh, from Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, book number 62, which Zabir uh, uh, bin Abdullah says uh, when he got married, uh, Hazrat Muhammad says, what type of lady have you married? He replied, 
I'm married to a matron. He said, Muhammad, why don't you have a liking for a virgins and for a fondling them? Zabir also said, Hazrat Muhammad said, why don't you marry a young girl so that you might play with her and she with you? Now, it's a, I was like a little bit disturbed. This is the preference of uh, Hazrat Muhammad or after reading Bukhari volume number 5, he you says You are more interested in reading the hadith rather than the question you posed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Correct, na? Uh, I just so got you it, ask so me I a question, it. I give you the answer. You want to read the answer of somebody else because you want to quote the hadith. Quote directly. Yeah, so because I, I get an answer from you also. That's See, why I'm quoting it to you. If you have 2 plus 2, I don't know the answer. I want to tell what other people said. Why are bother? I'll give you the answer directly. It is 4. What other people said, 7, 8, 10, forget about it. And that's why I came over here, sir. That's the reason why you're reading somebody else's answer if you're not satisfied. Okay. Correct? Yeah. That means I'll have to comment on both. On the question as well as the answer, correct? Okay. I'll do both, no problem. <laughs> See, what is the Niyah is important. If your Niyah was to get the answer, why Muhammad, 112 years old, 113 years old, married at 13 years old, the answer I've given you. But you also wanted the answer of Prophet Muhammad, correct? Yes, because... So directly, safe. what do you have to say? I'm not satisfied with the answer given on the internet, given on the paper. Directly ask the question on the Hadith rather than beating around the bush. I'll give both the answers. Okay. I'll give both the answers. Hope I may be satisfied with your answers too. Inshallah. Inshallah. That depends upon you. If yes, I sir. say 2 plus equal to 4, you said no, it is 5. I can't help it. I'll, I'll take it what you say, but I'll believe what I can believe it. Sure, sure. You have to believe what you believe. You can't believe what I believe until you believe what I believe. True, sir. Because it's not law of contradiction. <laughs> Sorry? Please go ahead. Sorry, what did you say? Please go ahead uh, because I want to know the answer yes. from you. As far as Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is concerned. Fine. I'll come to it later on. Regarding the man... By the name of Muhammad, you said, no? Yeah, because it's just some person from African country, Somalia. Country, Somalia. From Somalia, 112 years old, you said. Yeah. Married a girl of 13 years old. Yes, sir. And it's a fifth marriage. Fifth marriage. Yeah. Fifth marriage. Yes, not, sir. Not five together. Maybe one he married uh, and divorced. Fifth, and fifth I said. Uh, yes. The Pachwa Shadi. Pachwa Shadi, but ek do ko divorce diyoing ho sakte na? At any given time, you can't have more than four. Now coming to the answer, why? In Islam, you can marry. A woman, the moment she gets matured, if she reaches puberty, you can marry. That is Islam. Fine? A woman to marry. For a man, the moment he reaches puberty, till he dies. He can marry anyone. Choice is his. Would you marry a woman 15 years older to you? No. No. Your choice. But the Prophet Muhammad married. His choice. Prophet Muhammad at the age of 25 married a woman, Hazrat Khatija, may Allah be peace with her, who was 40 years old. You will not marry. I will not tell you you have to marry. It's your choice. Now he wanted to marry a woman 15 years older to her because she was pious. Who are we to object? He's willing and the woman is willing. When Mia Bibi Razi, what will he do? Because... Uh... Wait, wait. Let me answer. Please don't interrupt. You pose the question. I said sorry, sir. <laughs> yes, and I accept it. No problem. So if the husband and wife, who are we to object? That woman wants to cover her head. You said don't cover the head. Are why? Are she wants to cover her head and the president of France said women should not cover that. Why? He wants to enjoy seeing women. He can go on the Miami beach. Why does he want to do it in France? Doesn't it make sense? Subjugating. That woman doesn't feel subjugated. He's feeling subjugated. Why? He's feeling subjugated because he cannot enjoy women. He cannot enjoy the lust. So the problem is in him, not in the woman covering the head. But the man is 112 years old. Medical science tells us even a man of 112 years can procreate, can give birth to a child. True? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm a medical doctor. No, he wants to marry a 13-year-old girl who has reached puberty. What is your problem? You don't give your daughter to him. Who, no, don't give. Am I telling you? Am I telling your sister to marry him? No. No, if the parents also agreed and the girl agreed, she may be liking that man. 112 years. What a pious man. Reminds me of the Sahaba. I sacrifice everything. Because our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you marry a spouse, you look for four things. Virtue, nobility, wealth and beauty. The best among this is virtue. And if a woman of 13 years old finds a virtuous man of 112 years, I would prefer 
If I know it's virtuous, if I know, not any Tom, Dick, and Harry. I would not mind giving my daughter if I know that he's a virtuous man and will see to it that he takes my daughter to Jannah, I would not mind. But after verifying, he's such a virtuous man. Remind me of the Saba, the caliber of Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali. May Allah be pleased with them all. Why not? But today we see more for beauty, more for wealth. I'm not saying that the man of Somalia was virtuous. I don't know. I don't know. But can it be possible? Yes. Chances are less. Can it be possible? Yes. Chances are less. Why not? If the girl is willing, therefore I said in my talk, the marriage can only solemnize if, if the man and woman agree. That does not mean tomorrow a man, even of 50 years come then, ask my daughter, I will not give. If I said he is as virtuous as, as the Khulfa Rashidin, I cannot find a better match. I cannot find. I cannot find a better match. What you have to realize that maybe that girl found that man to be virtuous. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't interviewed her. I haven't interviewed him. Maybe that man found that girl virtuous. I don't know. So if the man and the woman agreeing, who are you and me to interfere? Why are we trying to interfere their rights? Now you may have married a girl, I don't know, good or bad. You may think she's beautiful, someone may think she's ugly. And someone says, why have you married a... Sorry, I'm not getting personal. My wife may be beautiful, mashallah. But someone comes and objects, why have you married an ugly woman? You will say, what is bothering you? I find her to be beautiful. Who are you to interfere? Will you get angry or not? Will you get angry or not? Beauty is subjective. Someone comes and tells you, oh brother, whatever your name is. You know, your wife is so ugly. You said, you mind your own business. That's my wife. Why are you interfering? If somebody comes and criticizes your wife, that is your choice. So as far as that 112 year Somali man is concerned and the 13 year girl is concerned, chances is very negligible, 0.001%. But if both agree, who are we to interfere? Coming to the answer of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that why don't you marry a younger woman? Virgin woman. The Prophet may be knowing how that Sahaba is. There's a person who came and said that while I'm fasting, can I kiss my wife? The Prophet said, yes, you can. Another Sahaba comes, can I kiss my wife? The Prophet said, no. So the Sahaba said, first one you said yes, second one you said no. Why? Because he knew that the first man could control his desire. While fasting, even after kissing the wife, he will not go beyond that. The second person, once he kisses his wife, he will break his fast. He will go beyond that. Prophet knew, you don't know, I don't know. Similarly, the Prophet may be knowing that if he marries a matron, maybe yet he will go after beauty. So Prophet advises him. But what did the Prophet do? The first woman he married was 15 years older to him. 15 years which you wouldn't like doing. You just told me that, correct? Yes. So the Prophet, he knows because he found piety in Hazrat Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. Therefore, she's one of the four pious women in the world. So the Prophet knows. Like I being a doctor, I may give one medicine to one person, second person, second medicine. You ask, why am I changing medicine? Because I'm a doctor, I know. You're not a doctor. So the Prophet gives different advice to different people depending upon the situation. You don't know, but the Prophet knows. And do you think what the Prophet said is wrong? It's right. Some people may like younger girl, some people may like older girl. So what you have to realize that it is nothing wrong. It is the advice given by the Prophet. Did he say something which is wrong? No, perfectly right. But see his lifestyle. All the women he married, except for one, only one was virgin. All of them, they were either divorcees or they were widowed.